Hey, in the first video of this series, we have discussed the Chinese aircraft carrier type 003, which is probably going to be launched this year. In the second video of the series, we discussed the force multipliers that are likely going to be part of the carrier wing. In this video, we are going to discuss the combat component of the air wing. So be prepared for J-15, J-20 and something unexpected about the brand new J-35. The Xinyang J-15 is the current centerpiece of Chinese naval aviation. The translation of the Chinese name means Flying Shark, while the NATO moniker is Flanker X2. Yes, because the J-15 is actually one of the many flanker variants that populate non-Western aligned air forces around the world. I always stress that the Chinese do copy way less than is commonly believed, but in this case the J-15 is indeed a copy, a reverse engineering of a Suhoi 33 prototype that was sold by the Ukraine. The prototype was acquired in 2001, the project started in 2006 and the first flight happened quite quickly in 2009. Problem was, Russia was not okay with China copying the aircraft and something similar actually happened with the J-11. So there has been quite a long and harsh confrontation about intellectual property between Russia and China, but this is a story for another time. 2012, the aircraft landed for the first time on the Chinese aircraft carrier Liaoning. That was in the end of development, in fact in the same year the first dual-seater took the skies. It is not clear how many aircraft are in service at the moment, we are in 2022, even because there have been a few accidents. It should be around 60 aircraft considering that right now the third production batch is running. These aircraft currently form the carrier air wing of the two aircraft carriers in service, the Liaoning and the Shandong. However, even though the two carriers and their air wing is considered combat ready, the main mission of these two carriers is to train pilots and personnel. About the aircraft itself, well, it's a flanker. So it looks like a flanker it flies like a flanker. It has the same structure, performance and aerodynamics of a flanker. However, it is a Chinese flanker. In fact, the avionics has been derived from the J-11 and it is largely national, albeit it has been inspired by some Russian solutions. The Chinese have declared that 90% of the components are in fact Chinese. And if you consider that the aircraft may fly with Russian engines, well, judge for yourself. There has been a long running querel among the Western analysts. Some believe that J-15 is superior performance wise to the Suhoi 33, but not as sophisticated as the Suhoi 35. Others simply believe that it is utter junk. Sir, this is not politically correct. Okay, some believe that the reverse engineering was not adequate and this led to issues regarding the flight controls and the aircraft structure. And indeed, if the original Suhoi 33 was already a relatively heavy carrier aircraft, the J-15 is even heavier. It is actually an aircraft that polarizes the judgment quite a lot, which means that we are not really sure about this aircraft, because if we were sure, pretty much the judgment uh, would have been rather uniform, no? The one thing that seems certain, though, is that the current carrier configuration is really penalizing for the aircraft. Since both carriers are ski jump carriers, the takeoff weight of the aircraft is really penalized and this is something the J-15 doesn't need because it is already quite heavy. So for example, if a full fuel load is embarked, the aircraft payload is limited to two medium missiles and two light missiles. Now this seems very bad, but this wasn't really penalizing for the original mission that these carriers had 
In fact, these carriers are a derivation of an old Soviet design in which the carrier was supposed just to do the local air defense of the naval group if the aircraft just had to scramble to intercept the enemy, while range probably wasn't a big concern. Obviously, for a navy that has blue water ambitions, this is a rather severe limitation. This limitation is expected to disappear when the carrier 003 is going to enter service. In fact, it is going to be a Catobar aircraft carrier with catapults. Analysts expect that the carrier wing, at least initially, will still be composed of J-15s. In fact, there are confirmed news that two prototypes with catapult bars and strengthened structures are flying right now. It is not clear if the third production batch will actually feature this variant, which is believed to be named J-15T. We will have to wait and see, but the wait is almost over. J-20 is currently the crown jewel of the Chinese aircraft industry. We have already discussed the aircraft at length on the channel, so I won't get into too many details, but I suggest you to watch the video, link above and below. Obviously the J-20 is a land-based aircraft, so what does it have to do with the 003 carriers? Well, simple, in 2019 the Chinese press reported that the Chinese Navy had chosen the J-20 as the new carrier-based stealth aircraft. Shortly thereafter, other news appeared that Chengdu was working to a naval version shortened. In fact, navalizing a ground aircraft is no easy task. The first element to consider is the role of the aircraft on the carrier. In fact, analysts do agree that J-20 is not a multi-role platform. Considering the characteristics that we know, it is expected that the two main missions of the J-20 will be BVR air superiority and long-range penetrations for ground attack with precision-guided weapons. The absence of a cannon and the lack of usable external pylons greatly reduce the versatility of the platform. This means that an air wing cannot be formed by J-20 only. Least at the beginning, a component of J-15 will be required. A second consideration is about the structure and the design of the aircraft itself. In fact, a naval aircraft while taking off and landing is subject to loads that are different and in generally higher than a land-based aircraft. The front gear assembly is subject to inertial loads when taking off from the catapult. The gear and the tail hook are subject to violent impulsive loads when landing. And the points where the gear legs and the tail hook are actually connected with the aircraft structure should be capable of bearing these loads and not breaking, and this is the easy part, but should also be dimensioned in a way not to show metal or material fatigue in the long term. And this is a bit more difficult to design despite the fact that today you have all these kind of computer simulations and so on. The whole aircraft must not be too flexible, that is, the wings and everything that is hanging underneath should not slam into the deck in case of a rough landing, and when launching the aircraft should not arch on the catapult. All of this must happen while we consider that the estate on the flight deck and in the hangar is at premium, so at least the wings are better be folding. And finally, the marine environment is salty, hence it is very corrosive, so an adequate anti-corrosion treatment must be implemented. All this means that a carrier-based aircraft is at least a 5% heavier of an equivalent land-based aircraft. So Chengdu is modifying the aircraft in order to make it suitable for carrier use and is going to make it shorter, so is going to occupy less space. So far, despite the fact that the development of the J-20 is usually quite quick, we have seen 
no prototypes flying. And one element that I suspect is making this job quite difficult is the aircraft configuration itself. For a carrier aircraft, it is desirable to have a relatively low landing speed in order to reduce the amount of energy that needs to be dissipated by the arresting gear and reduce the landing loads. This is the reason why carrier aircraft tend to have wings larger and wing loads lower than equivalent land-based aircraft. The J-20 configuration has quite small wings and probably relies quite heavily on the body to generate lift. It is unclear, at least it's not clear for me, if such a configuration is conducive of being adapted for carrier use. Even considering that the small wing size doesn't leave too much room for high lift devices in terms of sophisticated flaps or slats. So I wouldn't be surprised if the aircraft was undergoing a partial wing redesign just for this reason. But this is speculation, so we'll see what happens. What is not speculation though is that now we are sure that the J-20 is not the only stealth aircraft that is going to operate from the Chinese carriers. A few weeks ago an official tweet from a Chinese government account referred to an aircraft, a naval aircraft, as the J-35. This means that what has been known in the past like the FC-31 or the J-31 has now finally received an official J number, which probably means that it is going to enter service with the Chinese Navy. The aircraft originates from the losing design of the competitions that gave birth to the J-20. Shenyang, rather than abandoning the project, kept developing the aircraft autonomously. There is a long story behind this aircraft and we are going to dedicate a specific video to the J-35. However, there are some points that in the context of the composition of the carrier wing should be addressed now in this video. And to immediately address the elephant in the... <laughs> Uh, sorry, I forgot every time you mention this expression is arrived, so... So the thing in the room is the striking resemblance of the aircraft with the F-35. The common opinion is that the aircraft was designed on the basis of stolen F-35 designs. And while it is true that the theft happened, there is actually a judiciary sentence that clarifies that it is possible, though, that this is a misconception. In fact, in 2020, Yang Wei, who was the chief designer of the, of the J-20, published an article in a Chinese professional Iros magazine. In that article, he explained how the J-20 was designed having the F-22 and, in general, the American design philosophy as the reference point. But in the same article, he also states that the Shenyang competitors did not get inspiration from the American designs, but they got inspiration from older Russian designs. And the aircraft he's talking about is actually the predecessor of the J-35. I couldn't access the original article because it seems that now that scientific magazine is behind the Chinese Great Firewall, however, I could find references of the article in Chinese press uh, pretty much in the same terms, so it may be possible that the article exists. You should have told me before, sir. While I was in China I could have acquired a copy. No comment. And by the way, if you want to have access to the sources that have been used for this video, they will be published on Patreon and for uh, the channel members. So if you like what you are seeing and you want to actually support the channel, you will have access to this extra perk. However, we are not done. There is more. Vladimir Barkovsky, an executive of MIG Bureau, discussing the aircraft in 2012, Despite the fact that the aircraft was featuring some solutions that have been already tested in some Western design, it was in fact an indigenous design. How did he know? Well, the MIG Bureau at the time was consulting for Shenyang, officially for the integration of the engines, but you never know. Even though there are strong similarities, there is a good possibility that the aircraft is, in fact, not 
a copy of the F-35. However, if you want to leave a comment that all of this is nonsense, that the aircraft is definitely a copy of the F-35 and the Chinese, after all, are only capable of cheap rip-off, please feel free. The comment section is open to everyone, even those who don't listen to the video. As I said, we will be covering the aircraft in the near future when probably a bit more information will be available, but still we have to consider which role is going to have in the carrier wing. Well, the role that is expected to cover on the 003 and 004 carrier wing is that of the multi-role light fighter. In fact, the aircraft is relatively small. It is much lighter than the J-15. It has about eight tons of payload with two internal bays that can host compact precision guided weapons. Plus, the aircraft can have up to six external pylons for uh, all kinds of payload. And it also seems that the radar will be one of our old acquaintances, but you will have to wait a dedicated video for that. However, while you wait for the J-35 video, there are plenty of other videos dedicated to the Chinese Air Force, the Chinese Navy and the China engine and they are going to appear beside me. An enormous thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by being a member. I bring you all in my heart. And for now, thank you very much for watching and see you there.